Okay, we're gonna get into the real meat of this video. I'm excited for this because a lot of you guys asked for this and I've been I've been wanting to do a video on this for a while. So I'm just gonna explain the, the basics of how it is that the switch works with the rotating engines. If I move this uh, this up, I'll show you how it is that it rotates first off. You'll see that I have these uh, these docking ports here and I have them inset into each other and I'll explain that a little bit later. Um, and then I have, so I have two there and I have two here. So these are both 90 degrees apart. Uh, so then when I, when I decouple this, it'll rotate 90 degrees and this docking port will dock with that one. How I did that is by rotating these two engines around this, around this little bearing that I made with this RCS port and uh, all these different octags and uh, these thermometers. So there's one on each side. And the reason why it's stable is because I used infinite offset in order to move uh, move these out from the center the little spoke. I could have done it by just putting a beam across, but it adds more parts. It makes it a lot more uh, a lot more wavy. It makes it a lot more wiggly in flight, and it doesn't look nearly as nice. It doesn't make it as aerodynamic. So I did that with that. Um, I'm just going to demonstrate this in flight one more time, and I'll show you them rotate. Okay, so I have brakes turned on. I'm going to turn on my, uh, my engines. I'm going to press 1 in order to turn off my main engines. And then I'm going to press 0 or 6. It's going to decouple my VTOL engines. I'm going to swap over to them and just throttle up. Use SAS. And there you go. The docking port that was over there is now rotated up 90 degrees. And along with that, these engines have rotated up as well. Let me focus on, uh, on this cubic octag. And I'll do the same exact thing, uh, but this time just focused on here so you can see. Boom. Look at that. All right. I'm going to uh, just show you how, uh, how this hinge works and how it was that I was able to align them so perfectly. First off, docking ports are always hokey. Uh, they're, always, they're always weird to mess around with, and I'm just going to show you the colliders on these. Once again, this is the, the kaleidoscope mod that lets you do this. Any part that is an odd shape um, that they had to make the, uh, make the collider for custom is blue. Any, uh, any part which is a rectangle is going to have it in yellow. And any part which is a sphere, which as far as I can tell is just this RCS port, it's going to be in red. Now uh, I'm just going to uh, press this button, it's going to turn them all off again. Uh, this is the icon that shows it. Uh, the other one is editor extensions. Okay, so looking at this, um, these RCS ports, let me show the colliders on both of them. What I did here is perfectly align them to each other so I could get it, um, get the rest of it aligned. This is the collider for the top, that's the collider for the bottom, separated in the middle, and you see this very thin blue line? That shows that both of these are touching each other right along the very center. They're just perfectly aligned. If I separate them, you can see that that collider is attached to it, and scoot it up and right there perfectly in line now I'm just gonna go and uh, get rid of view on those and I'll show you the hinge once I got those docking ports aligned uh, what I had to do was get the uh, get the hinge centered now this hinge is, isn't in the exact middle of this engine and the reason why is because you have to use throttle in order to rotate these engines upwards and because I have the hinge offset when I throttle up it uses the off-center um, the off-center lift, the, uh, the off-center thrust, and it just rotates the engine upwards right around this point. Okay, let's have a look at this collider uh, and how it is that I got these uh, these hinges working. Now, a really annoying stock bug that you that uh, all of you guys who who uh, build very precise crafts a stock bug that you'll notice is the clipping plane with the camera. Uh, the colliders are kind of different. Uh, Watch as I zoom in on this part. You see that all these pieces just start phasing into the camera. The colliders do not. The colliders take a very long time until they actually touch the camera. Like, look, I'm zoomed way in, and they're still not even clipped with the camera. That is a stock bug, and um, I, I don't really know what to say about it. It's a real pain to work with. Uh, but this, luckily, uh, if you're building with hinges, um, this mod fixes all of that because you can zoom in really far. And once again, because you can see the colliders, you can get everything aligned really well. 
When I decouple this hinge, it becomes an entirely separate craft. These two engines and this, it's a separate craft. That's why I could show you swapping between the two of them. Uh, they're a separate craft and they are joined by this hinge. Now, once you see, uh, I have the, uh, the octag on the top and the RCS port is touching the very top. It's also touching the very bottom with that. It's also touching the left and the right. What that does is when I decouple this, this port here by pressing zero, the weight of this part drags it down. And then the throttle drags it, drags it back up again. I'm going to show you something really weird if you didn't figure this out. I'm going to go and make this the root part, and I'm going to delete the rest of the, uh, the craft. Let me get rid of that collider. Uh, what you'll see here is the center of mass is actually not in the middle of these jet engines. Now, this is kind of weird. Um, the center of, of uh, the center of mass, you would think that the center of mass would be right here-ish, but no, it's far forwards. And I'll just give you a little bit of explanation why it does that. So let me just show you a Panther engine. This is the engine that I'm using four of in this craft. I'm using the Panther engine because of the afterburner. I use the afterburner in order to control uh, altitude and uh, speed whenever it is that I'm VTOLing. Uh, I'm going to turn on the center of mass, and you can see that the, uh, the center of mass is way far forwards on this thing. It's way far forwards. It's not even close to the actual part. And the reason why is because real jet engines, the center of mass is not anywhere close to the end of the part. The center of mass is usually right in the middle. Now if I just show you... Uh, let me just put on a basic piece on the front. This is how the center of mass is on jet engines. It's right in the middle. Uh, but because of Kerbal Space Program, and because it has uh, jet engines as a piece on the back, the center of mass is way far forwards. Now, this makes a lot of sense when you think of it in real life, but in terms of Kerbal Space Program, it does not at all. But I actually use this to my advantage. I use it in order to rotate the engines. Let me go back to the switch again. When these pieces are rotated up 90 degrees, when these engines are rotated up 90 degrees, the center of mass, because it's so high, it actually drags the, uh, the engines down again, like I showed you in the little demonstration. And then I can just use um, the speed in order to bring it back up again, like I also showed. What all that means is that the center of mass, when these engine pods are forwards, is actually not where I want it to be for the VTOL mode. Because the center of mass is, is uh, forwards on these engine pods, it's actually farther forwards on the whole craft uh, from when I remove them. When I remove them, you can see that the, uh, the center of mass is right, nice, and perfect in the middle. Uh, and then if I were to grab uh, the sub-assembly of my other ones that are vertical, let me just grab this, tilt it up, rotate it, and stick it on, the center of mass is still right in line with those pieces. Having a visual marker like that is very handy, very, very handy to have. The other thing you'll notice is that all these, uh, these missile pods are also perfectly in line with the center of mass. When this thing flies, all of these, uh, whenever I fire these, uh, it doesn't actually change the center of mass at all because they're right in line with it. That is um, only really possible because they have the wings tilted backwards, and so these aren't floating off by themselves. They're actually attached to the wings. When all of that is said and done, we have a very nice and maneuverable craft which VTOLs, flies well, and flies the same regardless of if it is full fuel, empty fuel, and full payload or empty payload. Hope you guys like this video, and I hope this guide helped you out. Thanks, till next time. Average Joe out.